Greetings and salutations, this is Shelly Cat and welcome back to Dream Daddy. What happened last time? Oh yeah, we went on a great date with Hugo. Slept to trivia, but that's okay, you know how it goes. And uh, we helped our daughter deal with social stupidity. Not on her part though. <laughs> Never remember. It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh, so I decide to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear your patrons decide cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. Order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. The bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love for the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary sitting alone in the corner nursing a cocktail. Ah. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. Hey. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass to me before she's before staring off into the middle distance. Uh, say hi! I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her boots. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyway and she finally notices me. Oh. Hey, cowboy. Uh, you alright? Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Ah. Tears start welling up in her eyes. Oh. Hmm. I... Will you walk a gal home? Of course! I slide out of the booth. Seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out a hand to help her, but she waves me away. Hmm. I got it, I got it. She clearly does not got it. Hey. You know what? Hang out here for a second. I look over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Oh, that was sweet. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's cul-de-sac and I'm just making sure she gets home safe tonight. I know you. Yeah, it's nothing weird, just... She usually has one of the bar staff walk her home, but I trust you. She doesn't, like, go home with... I don't really know want to say it. One of the guys she meets. Question mark? Nah. Nah? Ain't her thing. Huh. I head back to the booth. Mary stumbles out of the seat and directly into my arms. It's still raining a little bit. I take off my coat and hold it over Mary's head. I'm a gentleman! <laughs> Such a gentleman! Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up the street towards the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her, for that she might hit on me. Or not. What did the bartender mean by ain't her thing? Is she a lesbian? Secretly? Because I'm pretty sure her husband is secretly gay. Uh, I think. I don't know, it's a weird situation with these two. Sorry you had to see me like this. I'm usually not... I know Joseph doesn't like it when I just sorry. It's all right. Huh? I'm sorry if I ever if I'm ever mean to you. It's all right. Hmm. No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just I'm having a really huh? forget it. It's weird. Oh, cute house. As we get to the cold a sec, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait. Can we just hold on? What's wrong? Hey. Oh. How about another drink? Old time's sake? Come on, Mary, it's bedtime. Mary looks me up and down, giving me a half smile. Huh? You're right. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding on to me for a little longer than feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. Mm. You're a good kid. Thanks for the company. Mm. Mary gives me a pat on the back, straightens out her sweater, and walks the rest of the way to the front door herself. Huh. Huh. Feels right. Welcome. You've got dads. I'm sorry, but you creep me out. I'm talking to you. No offense. Uh, hmm. Let's let's talk to Damien. I like Damien. Aw, that was sweet. 
I had a lot of fun hanging out with Danny in the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad's book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Hmm. No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment, folds it into an envelope and seal with purple wax. Damn, the dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads. Dearest Chris, I hope you find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this hastily, hastily, I doubt that, under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak, t speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has been greatly has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship held, helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Chris, if you'll allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by a moonlit stroll would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. That's cool! Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Mm. Wow. He's good. Mm. So you gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on Dad and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop shut. That's right. What? You have to write him back. A real letter. But my handwriting looks like two dollars fighting over the ground. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It it really does. It's it's not it's not good. It's it's not good. <laughs> Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Huh. Amanda and I hop on my laptop and peruse showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. <laughs> oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. <laughs> Evil never dies. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. <laughs> Actually, it's a critically, critically acclaimed exploration of the ennui of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? <sighs> nah, there's just lots of blood and vampire titties. <laughs> Welp, let's roll the dice. Ah. Purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down on the table with a man that is try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien! Uh... Uh... No. That's no, that's stupid. Oh, that, 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 yeah, no, that's backwards. Uh, <laughs> good one. <laughs> What's next? Must confess that my arrow should control over written word. That's a nice line. Jeez, Dad has some faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. Those are both good. Um, dun 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 dun. I'm gonna go with this one. Hmm. Not bad. Good action sentence. Yeah. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. While a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Like Ruhel's landscape with the fall of Icarus, I find myself lost in your details. Let me, um, get a- Wow! No! This um. one. Bring it home, Pops. Ah, bring me great pleasure to escort you to the <laughs> cinema. Smooth, calling it the cinema is a classy move. In clothes, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2 Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you'll find both titillating and enjoyable. Uh, that's just dumb. I'm pretty sure he's not, you know, into whatever. And then I sign my name, my full name, fancier that way. Oh. Is that okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. Hmm. You spelled his name wrong. What? Hmm. Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. <laughs> now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? Okay. No, that's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. She's going to get a candle, isn't she? 
You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's the other- uh, that- bleh. What's that other thing? Hmm. Amanda pours some of the wax onto the pool of the letter and expertly presses a small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing- huh. Here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Awesome. <laughs> Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver to his doorstep now, huh? Hmm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Huh? <laughs> I already called my guy. Hmm? <laughs> I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> ah. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. <laughs> I don't want to know if any of this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Hmm. Like you do. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. The knife finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mining and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit, which is exactly the same as all my other outfits, and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? <laughs> I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around and see Damien right behind me. You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ugh. I don't know, I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? Hmm. I didn't hear anything. What? Hmm. What? <laughs> Regardless, the hour grows close. Hmm. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Hmm. Please allow me to, repeat, to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Ugh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. Hmm. And what movie will you be attending tonight? It's the same movie we're seeing. My friends are making me see some kids' movie about talking animals. I didn't really care about it. Ah. Uh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Oh, my. You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Huh. Ha! Good luck with that, Dad. Let's hear rejoins his friends and I look, look over to Damien. Good luck with what? Mm. It's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. Huh. Damien and I take our seats and suddenly limp previews. Glancing at him, I can see he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. What the? Uh, is everything okay? <laughs> Everything is perfectly fine. Huh. I'm so, uh, excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Me too! Do you have a favorite horror movie? <sighs> I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Oh, interesting. <sighs> That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected it to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Damon's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. He's terrified. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? What? You must be joking. I love horror movies. The lights dim for the film. Ah! <laughs> oh, he's totally, he's totally afraid. <laughs> I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. Oh lord, we should have gone to the rom-com. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice. Ugh, and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. Ugh! Title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Hmm. Pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Yeah, okay, sure. Awaken my coven. <laughs> Love the name, by the way. Two more vampires slide the toss off their stone coffins onto the... F the that. They, they do that. Yeah. That's, that's what they do. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. It is time. <laughs> the three look at each other and then the camera. For the vampire crusade. <laughs> this rules. The trio of vampires flies off in the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. Ugh. 
We get to a tense moment in the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a, sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with because of course he has. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It's good to finally blood you. <laughs> oh my god. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything including the camera. <laughs> Dane screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. Oh my god! I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires of blood or vampiric blood. Ugh. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <sighs> Dane retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. Huh. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic and I got to an extremely scary section. <laughs> Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Point out a plot hole. Did you notice how that guard fired seven bullets but his gun only, hits, only holds six bullets? Hmm. Yes, that is absolutely unforgivable from a filmmaking standpoint. It's almost unwatchable. It's funny how it's so much easier to point out tiny mistakes in the work of others than it is to actually go create your own thing, huh? Hey look, that's an anachronism. Hmm. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus bad blood and the general's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. Ugh. The film face the black in the end appears on the screen. But then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover Carmela, to, who watched the two from afar. Huh. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire Crusade 3. Evil must die again. <laughs> With more thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. <laughs> what an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by the harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to the empiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Uh -huh. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk in the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? Ugh. As lovely as the company, yes. Aww. He thinks I'm lovely! Damn. Okay, here comes the smooth response. Uh, <laughs> thanks. No problem. Hmm. Crushed it. <laughs> we both stand there feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Uh -huh. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery? What? Are we going in there? Hmm. A little bit of Victorian flavor, Chris. Trust me. Hmm. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien has a Wow, the music really picked up loud there. Hasn't lead. That's lead. That's also lead, but in this case it's lead. Past tense is lead. Get rid of the A. Hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead, correct usage, thank you, as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we cross a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I got a hand in him for being in a cemetery. This is strangely romantic. Uh. Picnic in the graveyards is an old Victorian tradition, an appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, they even produces a blanket in the picnic basket. Where was he hiding that? Like, seriously. Wait, where are you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, under my cloak? Oh, right. Damien unfolds the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. These guys and their cheese, man. 
the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, it became the only place that people could see the plant life and find sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? What? I... I wasn't... besides deeply. Okay, yes, I was truly scared by the movie. I was not writing a book about black ma blood magic in my head. I just have never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. <laughs> Graveyards, however. I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built from cities, away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Ah. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. Oh. Instead amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death brings me great comfort. Hmm. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. I never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in the graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Suddenly it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance I see a shadowy figure in the trees. It's freaking Lucian, isn't it? What is that? Ugh. I'm not sure. I, it noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly toward us. It's shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. It's freaking Lucian, I'm telling you. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer, moving faster. Ugh. Wolf. It's a dang huh. dog. Oh. Mm. It's a dog. As it finally- Oh! As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Ugh. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Uh -huh. What a beautiful dog! Hey. We both look up, not expecting to see... Thanks. Oh, it's Robert's doggy! Uh. Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? <sighs> Hunting cryptids. Huh. What? Mm -hmm. What? Mm. I don't didn't know you had a dog. Hey. This isn't my dog. Mm. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her and now we're walking around the graveyard together. Mm. Hunting cryptids. Oh. Damien and I share a look. Oh. May I give her a treat? Oh. Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. Oh. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of the cloak and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laughs up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to spoo down her fur. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Oh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Oh. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. <sighs> I, uh, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. <clears throat> I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What do you say we make our way home? There's no minigame on this date? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't where they used to be. He backs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Mm. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Mm. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Mm. Chris, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded monogram handkerchief and presses it into my hand. Oh, thank you, Damien! Uh, that's not funny. That's kind of funny, but I don't know what to choose here. Oh my god. Uh, I will use this to my tears for those I've lost. A noble purpose, yeah. Because it's wife or husband, either way, died. They managed to help his feet. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you, someone who's open to my eccentricities. <clears throat> it's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. That's adorable. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. 
I lock the door and step inside. That was adorable! Hey. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window, hops <laughs> down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Ah. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? Huh. No, I was just, uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. Ah. Told you. But, as it turns out, Damien is scared. Eh? Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. S scary cool. Yep, he's so cool it's scary. Nice save, Chris. Did you know the graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Huh. I think I'm misremembering that. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. <laughs> How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? <laughs> Man, his eyes narrow. Uh. I don't trust you. Nor are you. Hmm. We make intense wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? Uh. I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. <laughs> oh, the adorable. Are you familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. <laughs> nice. Welcome. You've got All right. dads. That was that, that was fun. I'm glad there was no annoying mini game to screw up that time. We're getting closer and closer to the third date. I'm I'm excited. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.